In the times of MySpace and Tumblr, we used to grab the best quotes, the most aesthetic images, and the underground music bands nobody's ever heard of, and plop them all on our page as a way to express our individualism. But there's more to you and I than our favorite pizza topping. Unfortunately, we're either blind to what makes us, us, or we're way off in our perception of ourselves. I mean, there I use the famous TikTok trend of rate yourself from zero to 10, where some of you walking around the place thinking you're freaking like Cleopatra or something. Anyway, a 2010 study at Washington University found that while individuals may be more accurate at assessing their own neurotic traits, such as anxiety, it seems that friends and even strangers are often better barometers of traits, such as intelligence, creativity, and extroversion. Heck, apparently even your coworkers are more likely to give accurate descriptions of yourself than you are. So you don't know who you are, but why should you care? First of all, not knowing oneself makes you rigidly grasp onto beliefs, opinions, or external possessions that are all unstable, hence making you unstable as well. Let me give you an example. Say you've always identified as a straight A student or a 10 on 10 supermodel looking queen. I promise you there will come a time or it probably already has where that one thing that you base your entire existence, esteem and self-worth on will be shattered to teeny tiny pieces. You failed your first test at uni with the 50%. You, God forbid, get in a car accident and you end up disfigured. Who are you then? Nobody. Your entire identity will be gone. And people with no identity are willing to do just about anything to belong somewhere and get any identity back. When you don't know who you are, you are much more willing to allow or even downright invite other people to tell you who you are or who you're supposed to be, what you should believe in, what you should and shouldn't say. Here's what I say. You shouldn't want that for yourself. We are all so diverse and complex and beautiful in our own unique way, and our identity is forever growing and evolving, and you are not tied to any role, performance, or designer back. Another reason why not knowing who you are is a big problem is the fact that you will not know what decisions to make as you navigate your daily life. If you're studying to be a lawyer, but conflict seriously drains you physically, but you don't take the time to reflect on who you are and what is good for you, then you might end up stressed out of your mind and downright unhappy with your career when you finally reach your goal. You know the saying, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it? Well, that's because we wish for the wrong things for us. And speaking of the wrong things for us, if you don't know who you are, how do you know what boundaries to set for yourself and for others? How would you know your threshold, your limits, your worth, your love language, and the list goes on. And again, if you don't know your own worth, people will gladly come and tell you and treat you accordingly, of course. Because of this, you will always end up choosing the wrong partner for you, trying to get together with people who don't really suit you because you don't understand your own needs. Now, there are a lot of ways to know yourself better, but to keep this short and sweet, I'll show you two exercises that have personally helped me out that can easily be done by anyone, anywhere, at any time. The first one is simply asking two or three people that you are very close to that have known you for a few solid years to describe you as a person, to tell you your best and worst qualities. What do they admire most about you and what do they wish you could improve on? Now you need to be brave enough and open-minded enough to allow them to really be truthful with you because some of those points you might be shocked to hear. But here's the thing, if three out of three people you've done this exercise with have identified the same points, then the more reasons to do this second exercise called shadow work. 
The idea of the shadow self was popularized by the psychiatrist and psychoanalyst Carl Jung, and it refers to those aspects of the personality that we choose to reject and repress. According to Jung, shadow work was necessary because, and I quote, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. If you're interested in knowing more about this topic or if you've always wanted to start your shadow work journey but have no idea where to start, I invite you to check out an ebook that was years in the making because I wanted to sift through all the nonsense and extract only the creme de la creme exercises that will actually help you meet your shadow and make peace with your inner darkness. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to me if you like what you see because I will be back on my regular posting schedule, which is once a week. Surprise, surprise, you'll never know when the next video is coming. So hit that bell notification as well. Bye guys.